And, yeah. it, and immediately right there, you know, like, it didn't look like, you know, it, it didn't look like much of the characters were restricted in terms of, like, setups and mix-ups. You know what I mean? Everybody still has it. You know, like, I, especially Sadira. Oh, yeah. Especially Sadira, you know, like, with the Unbreakables removed. But you can still do, this, you know, very similar combos and still bring up the mix-ups with all three strengths of the Linkers. I mean, like, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you said it yourself, you, you can chain linkers with each other right yep, yep. Oh, there you go yeah i've been doing I mean, it to people uh i don't get broken too often but there are i mean honestly there are a lot of better things you can be doing with sadira now yeah and, uh, you, and, you guys will find them yeah i mean in my opinion i think sadira's linkers is is one of the hardest to break because the speed is quite fast there's not really a a pattern like like with like uh for instance like thunder you know where like the two the two hits the first the last hit are like much slower and then that's mm -hmm. when you can tell right away oh that's a heavy and bam click it you know what right. I mean? So uh, that that still makes her terrifying as hell. And even if you get locked out, then you know you're being taken on for a ride there. You know, like uh, yeah, it's, it's just crazy damage. So I mean, one thing. Oh no! I think we just got disconnected. Ah oh, crap! Hold on. Give it a sec. Give it a sec. What the hell? Oh, I think we're back. Are you there? Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, where did that cut off? Uh, I, right after I got finished talking. That was it. And then okay. it got cut off. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to add that I okay, I guess I would have liked to have added to the change list that we didn't, but we did this internally. Mm -hmm. uh, we were kind of all around like the round table discussing balance changes. Uh, we had, you know, the, the list of things that Iron Galaxy wanted to do, the list of things Microsoft wanted to do, the list of things that the community has told us they wanted done. Uh, but as we were making these lists of things that we might do, uh, we also had a list of the system changes we wanted to make and how those affected each character mm. specifically. So like at the top of the Glacius list we were typing, it said, how, did this, how does the system affect Glacius? So it was mm -hmm. all right there in front of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and it might have been nice to include some of that stuff in the change list instead of uh, just hoping people would kind of figure it out. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, that's not, that stuff we're definitely <laughs> very, very aware of. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, look at Sadira in season one, right? Mm -hmm. She... She, if we were to play this game longer, uh, she and Jago would run away with the game for different reasons. Like okay. we would just get better and better and better, and the the difference between her and some of the other characters would, the gap would start to increase, right? Yeah. Those executional problems people have with the stuff in her instinct, those would fade. Those would go away. People would just have it down. Mm -hmm. uh, Junior's pretty much there already, uh, and there there are several reasons why Sadira is. Would, would run away with season one. Mm -hmm. The first one is the super out of whack risk reward for being in the air, mm -hmm. which she dominates the air. There's no question there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So she's always in the least risky position. Mm -hmm. uh, the counterbalance for that was that she, her, she had no invincible wake up. So if you had a good meaty, you could pester her all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with those meaties, if you had really good timing, you could option select her back dashes and everything. Mm -hmm. You could really, really take advantage of her on knockdown. Or, was, you can, or you can bait out a great. shadow counter. Just just go one meaty, you know, normal, and if they feel scared enough, they'll shadow counter the next one, and that's another one. Totally, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the real problem, and this is just not the way that people play KI, is her runaway. Mm -hmm. There are, I can't name you anyone who is a runaway Sidira player. Uh, but that is, it's ridiculously strong. Mm -hmm. Like, almost nobody can catch her in this game. Yeah, I, I if mean... If you get the life lead, you bounce off the wall, yeah. you throw a Widow's Bite to avoid the landing recovery, so you only have a two-frame landing recovery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is your, your normal trip guard from a normal jump. Yeah. And you just, you just move back, like, very slowly, and you keep them from rushing in with Widow's Bites and neutral jumps, and eventually you get near cornered, and you bounce off the wall, and you do it again. Exactly. And next thing you know, 90 seconds are over, your opponent's panicking, and then they're dying. Yeah. Uh, that's not risky play, but it's very rewarding play. Yeah. And it's very boring play. And it is uh, a I'm, legitimate concern yeah. that, that, you know, the game could devolve into that. Yeah. I always argued that if Japan was playing this game, there would have been runaway Sidiras all over the place. Yeah. Some of those dudes play to win. And some of those dudes play to expose a weakness in the game design. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll just, like, look at how they play Marvel. Uh, they look for some of the dirtiest stuff. And, uh, yeah, Sidira Runaway is strong. Mm -hmm. It's well, really, I, really strong. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see that, like, some of the changes that you guys did with her... <coughs> 
you know, especially with the, you know, after the wall cling into the projectile and then they have more recovery, it just, it just promotes more, you know, you, you just gotta, you have to think about where you're going to be placing them, when to be placing them, Yeah. you know, and, and of course, you know, she does have an invincible getaway shadow. Is it fully inv- yeah. invulnerable? Yeah, yeah, I'll get to that yeah. in a second. Um, the other, re- the last reason Sadira was really, really ridiculously good was uh, that her instinct was giving her things that was obvious, were obviously not intended. Mm-hmm. Um, doing opener, 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 being unbreakable, uh, clearly not something that is desirable in the game. Yeah. Um, if her instinct was, I get free 60% when I touch you, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if you had designed an instinct that way, that way, that'd be fine. But she has these crazy traps that make everything she does insanely safe. Yeah. Uh, you have to pretty much hold your ground or move backwards when she's in that mode unless you can get her to lay a trap poorly. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything she does is safe too because she can just jump cancel. Uh, her instinct mode is really, really good. And uh, even without the free damage, it's really, 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 really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Sadira hasn't really lost the rest of the reasons that made her good. Mm-hmm. She can still run. It's just a little worse. Uh, because if you're gonna throw, you're gonna have to suffer that landing recovery if you don't make contact with your opponent. Yeah. A lot of you, a lot of you guys don't seem to know how that move works. The wall cling move. If you bounce off the wall, you suffer the landing recovery unless you hit your opponent or get them to block. Yeah, yeah. If you touch them, you don't suffer the landing recovery, mm-hmm. and it's still the same. You can still do that. But if you throw uh, the shurikens, if you throw the widow's bite in season one, you could avoid the landing recovery. But in season two, you will still suffer that weird lander recovery where she sticks her little uh, hand daggers into the ground and, and yep, yep, yep. it's not super long but it's it's enough yeah um, it's definitely enough to to help you make an attempt at her at least if she makes a bad move mm-hmm. so she'll have to be a little bit smarter with how she runs but she can still do it and now she has a way to get up off of her back if she wants to spend a shadow meter uh, which is a valuable resource, a much more valuable resource to like her and Saber Wolf than other characters due to their lack of meter under. Yeah. Uh, she can bounce off the wall. And if you can get your opponent to block something as you come off the wall, mm-hmm. then you have no landing recovery. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. It's not something you should rely on, but if you pepper it in at the right moments, it's quite good. Yeah, man. I, I, I can imagine. It just, again, it promotes you know, more thinking on the ground, more think- especially in the air. You know, yeah. choosing whether or not you want to, you know, take the time or spend, you know, take that risk at that whatever moment in the entire match, whether both characters are at green health or if someone's in danger. Yeah. And, you know, you just have to think more thoroughly about it. And that's what I like. That's that's what's that's what it's all about, man. So I, one that, of Sadira's awesome. best strengths got stronger too. her throw game. Mm. Like she she lands normal throws like it's nobody's business mm. just because of. The way she's jumping all the time makes you really scared to even try to tech a throw because te- uh, throw t- uh, whiffing a throw is so long in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get blown up by a, a heavy jump in into a full combo, which does a ton more damage now, remember? Yeah. Oh, a yeah. ton more. Uh, she's landing heavy kick all the time. She's just hitting like a truck now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get grabbed. Of course you get grabbed. Everyone gets grabbed by Sadira. Mm-hmm. I have not seen a tournament match where people didn't get grabbed by Sadira. Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen people carefully tech all of Jago's throws for an entire... You know, round or entire entire game, but yeah. everyone gets thrown by Sadira, mm-hmm. and now those do more damage. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a mix up up top. You might break her, she might counter break you. Yeah, uh, but if you let her do a short combo and land, and then cash it out with uh, Shadow Recluse, mm-hmm. yeah, that does not feel great. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> it, <does laughs> it sets hurt. up more silly Oki, mm-hmm. uh, of which she has plenty. She's good. She's really good. Yeah. Empty jump low, man. Mm, Sadira is so dangerous. It's terrifying. so dangerous. Yeah, and and the thing like a, a lot of the characters can just do that as well. It doesn't just have to be mm-hmm. Sadira. Empty empty yeah. jump low is so freaking dangerous. Yeah, you she's just I mean? in position to do it more often because yeah. of the nature of the character. Yeah. Well, you heard it, guys. Uh, especially for the Sadiras that are in the chat room. You know what I mean? There's there's still the potential there and some secret potential to figure out as well. Especially with the target combo. That was implemented on Sidira as well. I mean, who yeah. knows? Like maybe I don't we'll think see. anybody's weak uh, in season two, yeah. uh, and that's how we intend to keep it, right? Yeah. I, I would, you know, if we find a if we find something broken <clears throat> as a community, which we will, we'll miss something at some point. Mm. We'll we'll give it the old fix up. We find a risk reward situation that's out of whack. We'll fix it up. Mm-hmm. But the idea for me is that every character is so unique and powerful and fun that it, you just can't find a bad one. You should yeah. be able to mash random select. And you shouldn't run into 
you know, seven, three or eight, two matchups. You just shouldn't. Yeah. That, um, that, that's, that's, I think that's what a lot of people feel about KI today. There's not like horrible, like matchups, like street fire, like Ryu and Zane. Well, there are, there are a couple in, in season one. So, oh, oh, well, yeah. Like surrounding like Fulgore and, and Spinal. Fulgore is mostly the culprit yeah. of the bad matchups because his zoning is out of this world. Uh, he has anime game zoning in a traditional fighting game with no air blocking, mm -hmm. uh, and no like dash canceling into block. Uh, wow, 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 Fulgore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you are a slow character, you just lost to Fulgore, and uh, those matchups might be worse than people realize. Mm -hmm. uh, Fulgore Glacius is ridiculously hard for Glacius. That is definitely a seven three or worse. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen the horse. And Fulgore man. Thunder is probably an eight two probably yeah it's pretty bad. Uh, there's absolutely no reason thunder should ever be able to catch fulgore yeah I, and fulgore I, gets infinite free meter while he zones you and then he cancels his zoning options into other zoning options such mm -hmm. as uppercuts and lasers mm -hmm. or teleports in case you get corner him and then he's going back the other direction and doing it again pretty much uh and that doesn't even require a lot of practice um Unfortunately, <laughs> Fulgore was going to need some reworking, even if the meter stayed the same, mm -hmm. to deal with those super lopsided matchups, which mm -hmm. are undesirable mm -hmm. in, and, in any fighting game, right? And, and I've yeah. actually seen people try to excuse those and say, oh, but, you know, Grappler versus Zone are supposed to be hard. Mm -hmm. Sure. But do we need to live in, you know... In the, in the world meta. Do of we need to live in <laughs> the year 2001? Uh, yeah, yeah, where that's just how it is, and we accept it. You know, can't we try to do something to tighten those things up a little bit? Yeah. I, I while I'm while I'm ranting about that, uh, here's here's some here's a big one for you. Okay. Guess what, guys? Thunder's not a grappler. He's a hybrid archetype. He's a hybrid. Archetype. He has one command throw, and his it's not even a one frame command throw. You do not fight against Thunder like you do a traditional grappler. He is not Zangief. There you go. The reason traditional grapplers are scary and respected in close is because all that shit you do that's minus one, minus two, minus three, that none of the other characters can punish, grappler punishes. They just scoop you up. So you don't want to be anywhere near these dudes. Because yeah. you, you make them block medium kick, Zangief scoots you, scoops you up and then does crazy vortex to you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Thunder's not that character. Thunder has great vortex, Shadow, uh, Shadow Call of Earth is probably the most terrifying grapple ever in a fighting game. Yeah. But it is five frames, and it is not the core grappler archetype. Mm -hmm. He is some sort of hybrid between grappler, tank, and striker. And he's really fun and super interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me a while to warm up to him. I, I wasn't having fun with him at first uh, when I first started my random select tour of the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I find him immensely enjoyable now. Yeah. But I do also understand that he is... Uh, a hybrid and I play him that way you know mm -hmm. uh, the other thing too is like when you uh, when you think about grapplers and striker archetypes uh, <laughs> so what is a grappler's goal to grab the shit out of you <laughs> wrong <laughs> that is wrong okay the grappler's goal is to have a throw so scary that he scares you into getting hit yeah he, he yeah he can manipulate it's manipulating the other character to doing things that you want to do by just but the grappler's main game is not the grapple the grappler's main game is hitting you because you keep jumping because you're so scared of the grab mm -hmm. and the striker is the opposite like a character like cammy she cammy grabs people all the time yeah but she's not a grappler she grabs people all the time because they're so scared of her frame traps yeah right so Many the striker guys. the striker is actually doing more grabs than the grappler is and vice versa mm -hmm. because that's i mean that's what it is that's the psychology of the game yeah do you are you scared of getting grabbed by thunder? Answer: Yes, of course I am. It does a ton of damage and it's super fast. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna act like an idiot. And I'm gonna get destroyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like that. That's kind of like the least. Uh, you know, whenever I personally play against thunders, that's probably the the uh, the one the number one a uh, aspect of thunder that I see. You know, less than anything else, the grab because it's mostly just trying. You can see how they try to manipulate the other character by standing in front of them, knocking them down, waiting for them to wake up. What's gonna happen? Oh next? yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. It's the, psychological the, terror. It's exa great. It's already happening before you can even press a button. You know what totally. I mean? So, so you know, the, I totally understand that. And I've seen, you know, whenever I play against Thunder, like the the amount of command throws that I see, probably like three. 
you know, yeah. maybe like three. The rest is like, you know, uh, catching you on your back dash, just catching you with a low, you know, and and with the throw setups as well. You know, so I I Because you're scared. That. Yeah. Those are not the choices you would make against another character. Exactly. But you're scared. Uh, while you I'm on Thunder, I, I've seen a lot of talk about uh, Call of Sky. Okay. Uh, somebody said, why isn't it Call of the Sky? I was like, why isn't it Call of the Earth? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just named it like the other one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't think you guys understand how slow this move is. Because um, people are saying, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm just going to get blasted by this thing all day. I'm just going to zone uh, anybody. The lightning, I think, comes out on frame 45. Shit. Uh, uh, a Jago fireball comes out on frame 14 mm-hmm. for comparison. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are, you know, you know how the camera zooms out as you get away from each other, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're at full screen zoom in uh, and Thunder does this move with any character, you're going to be able to punish without shadow meter on reaction because mm. you'll react 14 to 18 frames later and then you'll still have, what, 20, 25 frames to input something and get there. Yeah. It's it, stupid yeah. slow. It's very similar. Well, I mean, in my experience, it's very similar to Glacius, you know, pulling out, you know, a very obvious shatter. As long as you could get a fireball, shadow fireball, or something like that. But shatter pops out of the ground on like frame 14 or 18 or something too. Yeah. And you it's could, pretty yeah. fast Nick, by comparison. This comes out yeah. on frame 45, yeah. 45 people. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty open. It's pretty open. So when does Thunder use this? Well, he certainly shouldn't be using it if the camera zoomed in at all because mm-hmm. he's going to get messed up. Uh, but he does use it when the camera zoomed out, which is where he becomes completely ineffective. Mm. Uh, and he has to chase. Yeah. And that kind of works in other fighting games because grapplers have a whole bunch of extra health. Mm-hmm. Thunder doesn't have that. And Thunder got hurt. He got hurt by the system changes because now things do more damage. All that, All those hits he has to kind of walk through that matters a lot now yeah um so you know the the two options were hey give this guy a way to catch people Mm -hmm. uh or do something creative and giving him a way to catch people is really dangerous because he's already very strong in some Mm matchups um do i really want him to be able to get to his ideal space so easily and quickly Probably not. So we were talking about this for a long time. We decided to try this lightning thing. The idea of this super slow but homing projectile that encourages people to not be at full zoom out. That's all. Yeah. It's like, hey, if you're at full zoom out, why don't you just come a tiny bit closer so I don't have to walk so far? Yeah. And suddenly the pace of the match increased. And we we tuned it, you know. At first it was too fast and then it was too slow. And we finally found the sweet spot. But... Mm -hmm. uh, if, it, if he hits you and you get a nice knockdown, they can quick rise, I'm pretty sure, but he can get one dash, uh, which is nice. Uh, the move has like 30 frames of recovery. It's minus nine on hit. Mm-hmm. If you meaty with it, you can get minus three if your timing is spectacular. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, but you're that's always important. negative. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, just, it's just not the move people think it is. And I know that some people who haven't listened to this podcast are going to get destroyed by it for a while because they're going to be jumping around all willy-nilly and not watching Thunder. Yeah. Watch him. If he yeah. puts his arms up in the air and yells uh, scuba Steva into the air, <laughs> uh, just do a projectile invincible move or teleport or something or liquidize. Scuba Steva. <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, like what you mentioned, it seems like, what, it's just like right outside, maybe a little bit more than that of footsie range. So that way they're not too far, not too close, and still in there to, you know, either think about what they're going to do as offensive and think about what Thunder's going to do since he's already close enough to try to start some kind of offensive so yeah yeah I, I like that that's pretty cool and you i can have, trade with it too if you have the life lead <laughs> mm-hmm. you can throw fireballs at him and eat a lightning and he'll eat a fireball yeah that's fine because you're gonna stay ahead exactly. right if exactly. you already have the life lead trade him all day cool exactly. and the thunder player is gonna have to go back to the old game plan and be like oh shit i gotta get in now yeah uh, but really this just helps him with someone who like a sidira who might decide to run the whole game and thunder can never catch her he yeah. can't I think I think the most interesting matchup for that one is definitely going to be Fulgore versus Thunder. Yeah, uh, all of Fulgore's matchups got like the the ones that were crazy before mm-hmm. that were free. They got super interesting, mm-hmm. really, really interesting. It's it's going to be really it's going to be awesome to watch because again, like like before, Fulgore could just easily run away and put you through a bullet hell of zoning yeah. projectiles. Now, so. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. You, you no, I, I think that the full design in my mind before 
was you zoned in order to get yourself the space to charge meter mm. and earn the resources you need to rush down. Mm. Unfortunately, there's no incentive to ever rush. If the zoning's working, why would I ever rush down? Mm-hmm. I Give me a reason. I can't think of one. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, like, uh, with Fulgore and Thunder, I mean, one character is eventually going to have to put their foot across the line and do something. You know, yeah. it, it can't be it can't be one singular meta that, you know, whether full work can just stay running away. You know, one person's going to have to actually, you know, start the momentum change and, and whether mm-hmm. or not full going to run away projectile. Thunder can easily trade with the lightning bolt. What full is going to wait for the lightning bolt to teleport. Well, what happens if thunder doesn't do anything? You know, it's it's just always, and thunder walks forward. Yeah, exactly. It's always it's and, and plus, you know, regardless of the fact if you're getting bombarded by projectiles, you can literally just block and gain some of that meter for mm-hmm. a utility that you can use when you're finally close for punishment. Right. So it, right. it's always evolving every time. Yeah. So uh, the, the new full gore design, uh, we'll call him new gore. New gore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the, we kind of flipped it on its head, right? It used to be you zone to earn the right to rush down, but unfortunately there's no incentive to rush down. Mm-hmm. And now you rush down to earn the right to zone. Uh, and that, that is not the only thing that's kind of fixed some of the bad matchups. It's also uh, the fact that you, you can't throw three fireballs for free anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, that was really strong. Yeah. It was just really good. Well, I, w- uh, I, wanted, to, um, I wanted to ask you how much time do you have left? Because I don't want to take up all of your time you know, doing this podcast. I'm sure you, you have other things to do. So that I way. don't know when I'll get the opportunity again, so I'll talk to what we're done. Okay, cool. Um, so we talked about you know, system changes. That was we yeah. went really thorough. We talked about uh, full gore Sidira Jago, um, mm-hmm. and we talked a little bit about, a little bit about Glacius, a little bit, tiny bit, not not too much. Yeah. We'll probably get to that again. Let me let me finish on full gore too. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, that meter does not build as fast as you guys think. Like we showed you a video of us just mashing buttons in the other guy's face and not doing anything to show you how fast it can go. Mm-hmm. In practice, uh, it's not going to stay there that long. So it's, it, it's just not like every time you throw a fireball or teleport or shoot a laser, was down, you yeah. take a spin speed bump. Mm. If you get knocked down, you take a spin speed buff bump. You know, you're playing footsies with Saber Wolf and he sweeps you. Oh, you just lost some spin speed. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Uh, and when you do all that zoning stuff, you're not just spending the meter you have. You're spending the potential meter you could get because you've slowed your spin speed down. Yeah. When you shoot the hype beam, you lose all 10 pips. And you go back to minimum spin speed. It's like starting the match all over again mm-hmm. in terms of meter. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a, a hefty cost. Uh, it takes about 13 seconds at minimum spin speed to build one pip. That is a very, very long time. Yeah. At maximum spin speed, it takes about three seconds, which uh, is pretty great. Are we talking about real seconds or KI seconds? Is that real understand? seconds. Okay. Real seconds. I know KI is like a second yeah. that passes like two seconds. I'm not exactly yeah. sure. But. Like when, we'll, we'll try and get some matches out there for you. But if you watch a full gore match now in season two he's almost always behind in meter on his opponent Mm. just from natural gameplay Mm. unless he's getting all the hits right yeah yeah yeah. if if it's a true back and forth he tends to be behind a little bit Mm -hmm. and you could back off and try and let the spinner spin right yeah but how are you going to keep him out if you try and keep him out with any projectiles you lose spin speed yeah and if you don't do anything the spin speed just naturally decays on its own yeah uh, I think you get about eight seconds or so, maybe it's sixteen seconds. I forget now. From full spin speed all the way to bottom of just natural decay. Yeah, and that's not that long. Mm-hmm. You mean you're not going to get infinite meter <laughs> just standing around at max, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you're going to get like four pips, six pips. Yeah, and you got to spend the pips on the cool fireball mixups too, yeah. which people are super scared of, and they should be because they're terrifying. But uh, those those combos start with a lot of KV scaled because they started with a bunch of fireballs. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this this uh, alone is gonna is already gonna spawn so many different kinds of full war players. Oh, totally. There's Maybe, gonna be full war yeah. players who are YOLO uppercut full wars <laughs> because yeah. they want to do air lasers to keep themselves safe. Uh, and then there's gonna be the type who really likes to do fireball mix ups off of Oki. Yeah. Uh, and then there's still going to be the frame trappy full gore. He gets a spin speed bonus off a throw too, which is cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if this was mentioned in the notes, but he used to be able to cancel the throw recovery into meter charge up. He can cancel throw recovery into mm-hmm. teleport now, which sets up a perfect safe jump. Oh wow, which is awesome. Yeah, that I did. Um, <laughs> I super did. cool. Full gore is a blast. Mm-hmm. He's he is new gore. I'll call him new gore. Sorry, new gore yeah. is a blast. 
Yeah. Uh, anyone can play them, but there's still a lot of technical stuff to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, Vi is going to stomp all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait uh, to see him, man. I can't wait. But I- do I think Fulgore is the best character in the game? No, I don't. Okay. Well, I think Sadira is better than Fulgore in season two. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see you know to to know which Sadira is listening to you uh, after making that statement and to see if, if they can find if they can convince themselves of that. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting. Um, why don't we talk about Sarah Wolf? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, okay. So I'm I'm gonna start off with with talking about one thing that's been coming in the chat room. Uh, quite recently even though there's a flood of things but the, the most recent thing that i can think of right now is his um his overheads mm-hmm. so uh back in season one you know uh the first you know the first overhead was a strong and but it was a single hit heavy was two hits yeah and uh some people had a problem with it other people you know said it was fine as part of the mix-up um i wanted to know talking about you, the linker version uh, uh yeah, the linker version. There you go. Okay, linker version. Yeah, not not the not the opener version. So sure. I, I wanted to know uh, what you think of that. Do you think it should follow the same linker strength tradition that that everyone has? One for light, two for strong, three for heavy. So there are other deviations too, but they're the other direction. Like okay. Orchid has Orchid and Thunder have ones that hit two, three, and four times instead mm-hmm. of one, two, and three times, right? Yeah, yeah. It's- uh, would it would it maybe be more ideal if they were all one two and three and there were no two three fours or one twos hmm. maybe mm-hmm. uh but I, I don't th- I, I mean unfortunately that's like a little piece of of esoteric knowledge that you just are gonna have to have if you want to be a competitive ki player indeed you're just gonna have to know that these couple saber wolf linkers hit one and two instead of uh you know one two and three yeah and you're gonna have to know the thunder one hits two three four mm-hmm. um you just, I mean, that sucks, I guess, for new players, but it's not really on my on my shit list of well, things that I want to address. Yeah, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from. I mean, whether or not you have, you know, the pure reactions to block it, you know, whether it's incoming without outside of a, you know, outside of a combo, because it's always going to be a single hit, it's fast, but it's unsafe. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. whether you can see and and per, not, not necessarily predict, because I think it's somewhat reactable. I personally think it's somewhat reactable, but whether or not you can see and react to that strength, whether whether it's uh, mo- mostly in a heavy, but for the strongs, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I, a lot of people, you know, they have mixed feelings about it. I see what you mean, you know, like you just... Some people say it's too fast, right? Yes, yeah, it's too fast, or, or like the, the number, you know, hits, uh, throws them off. I see what you mean, though. Like if, if you well, we'll keep a, an eye on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, as long as you have a lot of knowledge about it, you know, you yeah, I mean, it's, su- it's super easy to, like, if this is a recurring problem in Season 2 that is is something that the community wants addressed, we can certainly look at it. We can certainly uh, look at adding a little more hit stop to those two hits to make it a little easier to see uh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want to jump at anything that wasn't on any of the the proposed fix lists in our got meetings, it, right? Because there was the IG yeah. fix list, the Microsoft fix list, and then the community fix list. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't on any of those lists, mm-hmm. right? Maybe yeah. there were a couple people in the community talking about it, but it was not like this overwhelming thing we were hearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did a big poll. I'm sure you participated uh, a couple months ago, and we got a ton of great data, but there were lots of reoccurring th- themes in there. Mm-hmm. Like, make Sidira's Unbreakables go away. Make Jago's Manuals go away. Yeah. Like, these were recurring themes that we have to acknowledge mm-hmm. uh but not really a peep about wolf linkers okay well i mean but there's always the new hotness right yeah there's always the new hotness. we 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 get rid of some of the main culprits of of angst <coughs> and mm-hmm. now the secondary culprits of angst will become the new main culprits of angst yeah, yeah and we'll keep an eye on it i mean you guys heard it from keats i mean you know especially judging from you know the, the surveys that were you know posted around i mean i did one myself i'm sure a lot of people in this chat did did, did it themselves you know um we got over a thousand of you guys respond that's uh, which is fantastic yeah that's a lot um yeah but like like um you know a lot of people all you know always mention the fact of with with his linkers with saber wolf's linkers how they become almost kind of like a like a like a just a guess at times because it's very similar to jabs i mean if that's sure. not, it, yeah if that's not something you know that you guys are, are uh looking at right now i mean they again like there's always feedback to come you know somewhere else you know yeah. what i mean so and, and, i mean i'm all for silly nonsense <laughs> in the game it's just about where 
the risk reward, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so yeah. if you guys are feeling this is out of whack, then uh, by all means, when season two uh, pre-release starts, keep trying it out. Let us know if it still feels out of whack to you. Yeah. Uh, and if it is, then we'll, you know, I'll talk with the team and we'll see if that's something we can fix up. Yeah, definitely no jumping to conclusions. Try it out. See what, you know, you feel is more comfortable, you know, and just that's why the forums exist. You know? Yeah, it's, it's the forums, my Twitter or whatever. You know, yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy to converse with you guys. Uh, I'm just as passionate about the game as you guys. I was going to be a hardcore KI player before I found out that we were working on it. I had already started playing and grinding. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I can't enter tournaments because I'm working on it, but uh, that's okay because I can still come out to events and play with you guys in casuals. And, and uh, it's just the fact that I love the game so much and I love what Double Helix did uh, just puts me in a great place to you know kind of be the guy to be lucky enough to guide it. Yeah, man. I mean, both, both of you guys, you know, like Double Helix and IG, you guys have made the game super interesting super interesting that's and, what and, i want man i want that, I've, what I've happened, seen what i've wanted forever i've wanted a game that's a, a faster than street fighter but you know a traditional fighting game that tries yeah. to do the thing the anime games do the anime games have insanely interesting characters but unfortunately where those fall apart for me is the super long boring combos <laughs> yeah 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 and uh you know something more like street fighter would be combo wise at least would be better for me and then ki strikes this happy ground where yeah it's got the long cool combos but there's this two-way interaction the whole time it's always yeah. uh breakable i always got to pay attention i gotta look for habits uh yeah. uh and that is just it's awesome man i love yeah this game. yeah I, I mean after playing street fighter for six years ki is is a huge breath of fresh air is yeah I mean, i'm an old school breath. player too i i come from super turbo i've been playing oh yeah you're way more 15 OG. or more years uh yeah. so playing street fighter 4 initially for me wasn't the revelation it was for a lot of other people it was like wow this yeah. feels slow and laggy. Yeah, yeah. I started. I started <laughs> from uh, SF4, so yeah. To me, yeah, of course, it's different. So, but um, yeah, why know, do the characters walk so slow? I, I, I didn't know. What's these in this game? Why are they I don't understand this at all. Why are they I'm gonna go play nonsense. TVC. <laughs> TVC. <laughs> I miss that game. <laughs> TVC was okay. It had a lot of problems too. Yeah, but um, I mean, so far, you know, we're. Uh, we we've been enjoying you know like where ki you know what ki is now where it's heading to so many people are so freaking hyped with with all the new stuff that's being implemented it's going to be awesome to see what everyone has what what potential people can unlock and you know um i guess you know redefining characters in their own way like this is what makes glaciers glaciers this is what makes full war four you know like kind of like the new stuff yeah know? um so i i can't wait and and uh Liquid eyes. Liquid eyes. Liquid eyes. Liquid eyes. Liquid eyes. So liquid eyes is a liquid eyes is a, is technically a projectile dodge, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's got it's got startup. I think it's like nine or ten frames of startup, uh, where he shrinks down into the puddle. When he's in puddle form, he's completely invulnerable, mm -hmm. and then on the way back up, he's vulnerable again for like nine or ten frames. Um, there are a lot of things about this that aren't readily apparent. First of all, it looks exactly like the startup of puddle punch, so it scares people sometimes. That's true. Yeah. Uh, they just brace for impact. And then suddenly you pop up out of the puddle and you grab them. <laughs> mm. uh, and then, yeah, you're dodging projectiles, right? You just yeah. can't win the projectile war. The startup of hail is too slow. Mm. Um, but there are now situations where you could actually put a hail in the sky, dip under a Jago fireball, and then let your hail go and then pop back up. And now you can advance a little bit. Mm. So you don't have to lose your space as easily anymore. Uh, and then the other really cool thing that really helps Glacius in his matchups is that the main way that a lot of characters got in for free on him was they did a move like Wind Kick or Full Wars Drill, mm -hmm. right? And then they're suddenly in. Yeah. Um, or Spinal would just teleport. Now he's there, and you have to deal with it. Some Now, like, on reaction to a Full Gore Drill, you could turn into a puddle, and then the drill whiffs, and then you stand up, and then you punish the recovery, and that feels fantastic yeah it feels so good and when spinal teleports i just turn into a puddle mm -hmm. and then he appears behind me and he does uh you know uh the shield bash move the skull crusher or whatever it's called yeah yeah it's shield bat yeah yeah uh, and then he whiffs me and then i stand up and i start punishing him and that feels fantastic yeah you caught them with their pants down yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you're early enough on a jump in, you might be able to scare people with it as well. Turn into a puddle, they land and whiff their normal. Mm -hmm. uh, you can pop up and smack them around a little bit if you're if you're smart. How long uh, can you uh, li be liquidized for? You could stay down there for like half a second, not very long. 
Okay, and there, there's nothing, like, no other different strengths. It's just, like, the... Nope. The, okay. You press and hold all three kicks. Okay. And then when you let go or when the time limit expires, you come back up. Okay, cool. All right, that, that's what I was uh, wondering. Was, um, we also saw a question about that earlier, too. Um, okay, that's cool. And, and overall, I, I feel like the system changes also benefit him because of his pokes. Yeah. Holy crap. Oh, there's another, <laughs> another thing, too, about Liquidize. Uh, there's, there's just, like, one part of the game Glacius had trouble accessing, mm -hmm. which was that throw bait. He's got a great throw range, mm -hmm. but a lot of characters will kind of walk up to you and jump up, and then you whiff the throw, and on the way back down, they punish you. Mm. But Glacius is so floaty, he doesn't get away with that. Yeah, he can't. So now you use Liquidize for that. You walk oh. in, you bait the throw with Liquidize, you go down into the ground, or they whiff the throw, you pop back up, and you punish. That's so dirty. It works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it is throw vulnerable, but yeah. it works. It just does. Yeah. So it's, it's essentially the same as a Skeleport. Kinda. It's uh, Skeleport in place, I guess. Yeah. Can you actually throw um, toward, um, after when they come up from the Liquid Ice? If, if they just do it and you're, you're not doing anything, you just wait for them to come up. Is it, can it actually become a punishment, uh, a punish with a throw? Yeah, you, you can't cancel it into anything, okay. but it recovers fast enough that you'll get punishes with it. Okay, it's not quite the same, but it, it's similar. Like On paper, it sounds like it's shit. Like, you just look at the frame data for it, and you look at the hitboxes, you're like, this is going to be terrible, but it's mm. so good. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I can imagine a lot of Glacius is after hearing that, they're already going to think about where they're going to place their liquid ice, when they're going to decide, you know, whether they're in your face, whether they're super, super rushed down like Filthy Rich, or very, very, you know, passive, passive-aggressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> poke, poke. Yeah. Poke. But, it uh, benefits both styles of play, honestly. <laughs> I can't wait to see both types of Glaciuses use this thing. And like you said, the poke damage, uh, that's the world to Glacius. That's just the world to him. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, just, I, I see another interesting question if I can sure. ask you. Uh, you so, um, this has been quite the topic uh, past couple of months. The uh, holding up and being in uh, somewhat now, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna call it invulnerable because that's how I feel. <laughs> but holding up and never being able to throw them. Yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. If you if you uh, so it, here's the experiment. I did this really early when Ki came out uh, before I was working on it. Okay. Uh, because Glacius is. I want to know more about Glacius Shatter. It's like, is this unblockable? Is it a throw? What is this? <laughs> like, well, how does how does the game consider this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I set the dummy to jump in place, and I tried to shatter it. It's like, I can't do this. I don't think this can be done. Uh, and then I set the dummy to do jumping kick and repeatedly, yeah. and I could shatter him almost every time he landed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This because you have a longer landing recovery if you press a button. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this game might have, in terms of 2D fighters, traditional 2D fighters have the shortest landing recovery for... Uh, whiffed or, or for uh, jumps that don't have an attack in them ever <laughs> and yeah, that recovery yeah. is definitely not throwable it still counts as an air mm -hmm. um so yeah just i mean that's just that that is what it is you can't throw them if they hold up yeah yeah i mean ever. like yeah like for like as long as if they press a button you can trip guard them yeah it, it's this it's the same like people have already been doing it like crazy already they oh, usually yeah. when somebody empty jump crosses up they usually go for a low just in case if they can catch <clears> that that totally. uh, trip guard uh but you know if they go for a cross up then you know, then you chose the wrong decision. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's still going to be a thing. All right. So I hope I hope that answers uh, your guys' questions because you guys have always been asking that in the past couple months. <laughs> that's <laughs> been one of the extreme hot topics. Um, let's see here. So uh, we covered a lot of characters so far. Uh, yeah, we definitely talked about a lot. Uh, uh, You're making me pumped to go back to work tomorrow and, <laughs> and play. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, I, seriously, like after this, I'm actually going to be playing too. Because we usually play KN and then have a podcast, but this is the first time we started off with the podcast. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, um, gosh, did we cover everybody? I, I, uh, we, feels... well, we talked a little bit about everybody, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, people are super scared of Spinal right now because they're uh, like, oh, Spinal was already great. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't think you guys were really exploiting Spinal's weaknesses because mm -hmm. he's not that great in season one. Yeah, it'll, uh, it'll it'll come to light when when everybody has th their hands on the game, you know. Like, yeah, I mean, in season one, he just like his weaknesses were devastating, mm -hmm. and we didn't fix any of them. Mm -hmm. There, he still has devastating weaknesses. He is still uh, 
the momentum machine, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you can still pester him with crouching light option selects on wake up and just eat him alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, his his neutral is still kind of weak. Mm-hmm. Uh, his footsies are non-existent. His jump game is all jumping fierce. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and that's riskier now because if he gets anti-aired, it hurts. Um, his uh, skull pressure, which was, you know, button skull, button skull, button skull, uh, didn't amount to much because he was really never in range for a throw. Mm. You could see the highs and lows pretty well once you learned to see through the darkness and the explosions. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were opportunities in there because it wasn't always a true block string to actually option select uh, projectile invincible moves yeah. uh, or shadow counter the next normal. Mm-hmm. There were scary spinal players out there, but they mastered the momentum, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And they learned honest defense and learned how yeah, to definitely. deal with getting up without doing something, right? Mm-hmm. All the other characters can get up and do something. But yeah. Spinal just has to get up, take it, and be smart and yeah. block. Uh, you know, I was one of those guys. I, I used to play Seth in Street Fighter Four, and I, I could teleport, I could dragon punch, I could backdash, I could do all kinds of stuff. Um, and then I switched to Cody and I had nothing. Mm-hmm. And that was when I finally started to learn honest traditional fighting game defense. And it took me a while. I was getting blown up because I just wanted to do something on wake up. But now I know to just calm down and sometimes block. Yeah. Um, um, so that, that, that hasn't changed about Spinal. What has changed about Spinal is what was, in my opinion, kind of a weird imbalance. I think, I, I wasn't there. I think he was designed to be a character that struggled. Yeah. But when he got his skulls, he was a madman. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But I felt that and a lot of the team felt that with Skulls, even with Skulls, he still wasn't as good as Jago and Sidira and maybe Wolf and Thunder. Mm-hmm. He had he uh, had a lot of he had a lot of windows of opportunity to punish on either on either teleport or mm-hmm. I mean I mean whether it was hard for people to understand where the punishes were because a lot of people would ask you know how can I punish Skeleport? What do I do? You know like most of it yeah. you know like whether you use option selects or not you know Skeleports was not an invincible move like on startup or at right. the end right and if so, you come from marvel or anything you can block those teleports for free every time they're just not fast yeah, enough yeah you can block every single skeleport you know offensive whether or not he was going to cancel into a special on reaction you can block every single one of those and, yeah and, and, you know as long as you have the patience you can see an overhead coming totally or, or you know what i mean so I, I i understand you know so now you got a few more ways to get skulls but the new way to spend skulls is what makes Spinal the Mad Man that mm-hmm. I think they wanted him to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, the run cancel. So now that, that pressure string of crouching medium punch, fireball, crouching medium punch, fireball, standing hard kick, fireball, yeah. that now gets craziness peppered in because now there's crouching medium kicks to worry about. So there is actually a low that could be blasted in yep. uh, that isn't uh, super punishable. Mm-hmm. And he might run cancel any one of those, which will make you whiff your shadow counter. Uh, and then that puts him in a position to respond to any EX or uh, sorry shadow move you were mashing out. Mm-hmm. And if you weren't, he might just run up and grab you. And you're so scared of that, you'll probably press uh, the buttons to tech, and then he might have just run up and hit medium punch and yeah. counter hit instead. Yeah, uh, yeah he's terrifying, yeah. Uh, as it should be with skulls. And he's got a slightly easier time getting them too. He's not always going to have to do a skull cash out to get skulls. Now he can use the spectral manuals. Yeah. Uh, but on the same token, the, there are a lot of changes in this game that hurt him. He didn't get anything to help him defensively. Uh, the poke damage bonus probably helps him the least and hurts him the most because he just isn't hitting those types of things very often. Yeah. Um, and, a, and a variety of other things. Like, yeah, I mean, he can control the meter still, mm-hmm. uh, but meter is scarcer. So, you know, maybe that's a huge buff for Spinal, but we'll see how it plays, it plays out. Yeah. I, I, I think his weaknesses still keep him in check. It's going to be a whole different evolution, like, once again, like, you know, with, with, with Spinal having, you know, a, a run cancel and being able to get uh, skulls way more often, it's going to force you to think, you know, not, not on overdrive, but it's going to, it's going to have you thinking, you know, what other things can he do? He, he can probably, you know, bait out more throws, you know, and you have to just stay on top of, of things. Because back then, it was, 
okay, you know, uh, crouch and medium punch, fireball, crop, you know, crouch and medium punch, fireball, standing, whatever, you know, like the, the usual, yeah. wait till you mm -hmm. block everything, you know, and then either a slide comes after that, or he likes to go in the neutral game, you know what I mean? Yeah, or, or he might throw an overhead in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and and you could, you could still punish that, if you hit like a mm -hmm. low or something, you still hit him out of it, and, and you can either shadow counter, or try your chances to shadow counter an unsafe, you know, uh, a normal move into a fireball, so uh, this, like, it's definitely, it definitely sounds like he's going to have more options but at the same time you know whoever you know whichever spot you're fighting against it's just you're just gonna have to evolve your game to a different uh you know aspect other than what you've been learning in season one with just the you know just the the block strings and then the neutral game it's just learn be, the okie you yeah, know just learn the uh there are still a lot of players out there i mean obviously these aren't top eight <laughs> people but they are people who are passionate about learning the game who i still see get a knockdown and then back up mm -hmm. and i'm screaming at my at my tv when i see this stuff on a stream like what are you doing you knocked him down. Go, go do something to yeah, him. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, when you guys learn that stuff, and I'm sure some of the awesome people out there will put out some tutorial videos. The problem is the guys who know how to beat Spinal Best are the top Spinals, and they're not going to put out a video teaching you how to beat them. Yeah. Somebody else is going to have to do the research. Yeah. And yeah. and put it on YouTube so that people can digest it. Yeah, for sure. Um, which will happen eventually as the community grows, right? It's mm -hmm. it's it's uh, a small community because we're on Xbox One which is still an expensive and new console, mm -hmm. and we're still a young game mm -hmm. uh, on a console that is not super populated out there. Yeah. Um, and it'll grow. You know, The character count will grow. The number of players who are interested is going to grow. Uh, it, it, is, it is legitimately possible uh, for someone to look at KI Season 1 and be like, I'm interested in that game. None of the characters currently appeal to me. Mm. It is yeah. very possible. I think they nailed it. I think they got a super diverse roster. Mm. Uh, there are there's more diversity in those eight characters than in the entire Ultra Street Fighter Four roster. Mm -hmm. But it is still possible for someone to look at that and say, you know, some people are just, they play aesthetically only, right? I pick a character based on looks. There, yeah. somebody could look at that roster and be like, there's nobody there for me. Mm. But the more characters we add, the less likely that will be. Yeah, that's true. It's just eventually we're gonna hit. That, that random person who's just like, there's nothing there for me. They're going to see something we added and be like, oh, I want to play as that. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they'll give it a shot. And then, of course, they'll get hooked because the game's godlike. Yeah, for sure, man. And, oh, you know what? That actually reminds me. What would you say to a new player that's just picking up KI right into Season 2? Like, well, what what advice would you give that new that new player? Pick okay. Saber Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, Evil. I mean, honestly... Uh, <laughs> You, you, I actually teach people fighting games. I've been teaching people fighting games for years. Mm -hmm. uh, and my first bit of advice, uh, and I know this goes against a lot of the things other people teach, a uh, very common teaching is let people play whoever they want because if they're not passionate about their character, they won't learn. They won't take the time to learn. Mm -hmm. yep. But I actually think uh, you should spend some time just playing the easiest characters in the game because you will learn the fundamentals of the game faster. And yep. then when you switch to the character you love, things will be smoother for you. Yeah. Uh, so I do feel that if you're learning Ultimate Marvel 3, you should start with Wesker. Mm -hmm. And I do feel that if you're learning KI, you should start with Saber Wolf. It's just going to be an easier road for you. Yeah. There are less things to learn before you can be a substantial threat. And then once you're a substantial threat, you can play anyone you want. Exactly. Yeah, it, that's, it's one of the best ways to go. That's how I feel about it. But again, there's two schools of thought on that. A lot of people think that there's no motivation if you're not playing who you love, so just start with whoever you love. But unfortunately, yeah, yeah. if what you're attracted to is Spinal, good luck being a brand new fighting game player yeah. starting with Spinal. That is not easy. It's going to be rough. Super mm. rough. I mean, like, mm -hmm. the, the, way, the way that I go about things and, and just mention on stream is either, you know, like uh, everyone says, you know, start off with Jago or, or, or Saber Wolf first. And at the same time, watch a lot of videos. Watch out what, what people can do. People know? don't know how to watch videos, though. That's true. It's a weird thing to say, but they're, they, uh, unfortunately, people are very attracted to flashy stuff. So when they watch you play, they see you do a combo, and they're like, oh, man, I want to do that Grimm's combo. Mm. They have no interest in winning. They have no interest in being good or understanding the whys and why nots. They want to yeah. do the Grimm's combo. That's true, yeah. Right? That's true, yeah. And that's the wrong way to learn how to win in a fighting game. Um, if you're if you're so focused on just landing your cool flashy thing, uh, you have no hope of yeah. of actually studying your opponent. Yeah. Fighting games aren't about controlling yourself. Can, fighting games are about controlling your opponent. Yeah. And if you aren't looking at the game in that way, you'll you'll never be great. You just yeah. won't. 
Yeah, you won't. That's where mind games and stuff stem from. It's just that yeah. that manipulation of, of. I have options. You have options. My goal is to make you feel like you don't have options. Yeah. If exactly. I can do that, I will win every time. Yeah, I think why that, it's cool I, is because you're doing that to me too. Yeah, that's why it's cool. I think I think that that's more. I think that's best explained during rushdown for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, for, totally definitely for sure. Um. But uh, man. We, we've talked how long have we been talking we've talked for an hour and 26 minutes yeah i got all philosophical on you too Philos- i know man I, I see people saying orchid butt grenades L- listen guys <laughs> oh gosh she's clearly wearing a utility belt like very clearly wearing a utility belt what do you think's in those pockets come on now yeah she's just reaching into her pocket for a grenade that's all don't worry <laughs> about it baby everything's gonna be all right and, and, and her, what about her? Does she get does she get a utility belt on her alternate costume as well? Or is it just all spandex? It's just spandex. That one's from her butt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> oh shoot, man! Well, dude, it was she. I mean, she is. She is. A, she's a spy. Yeah. And she's dressed more like a, you would expect a spy to be dressed now. She's not dressed like. Uh, she's not dressed like she's about to jazzercise anymore. Uh, she's dressed like. <laughs> Somebody who's going to infiltrate someplace. She has tools. She has the tools of the trade on her. She's got the night vision goggles. She's got grenades. She's got. She probably got a grappling hook or something in one of those pouches. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, makes sense to me. She's pulling a grenade out of there. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it. Well, <laughs> don't get so hung up on her butt. Okay. Who? Well, hey, now that that's a hard <laughs> that's a hard thing to say to a lot of people that are hooked on that butt. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. Just, just close your eyes and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> um, but shoot, I mean, it, do, is there anything else that you want to talk about at this? Because we we talked about just about everything. Uh, is there anything um, else that you want to mention? For, <coughs> no, know? I just I want to thank everybody out there for being so positive and for being excited for season two. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've never seen a fighting game change list come out positive reactions before. Usually, it's all doom and gloom. And, uh, you know, I think part of that is just, you know, like Street Fighter will release their list in chunks. So it's even harder to get the big picture. Mm-hmm. Um, and we released it all at once, which helps a little bit. And we did the, you know, the, the video tour of a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just, you know, thanks for staying positive. I know it's a weird transition to go from developer to developer. But, uh, you know, before I was me, I was one of you guys. I was playing the game and loving the game. And, uh, you know, I, I maybe I have a slightly different d- design philosophy because uh, I'm, you know, I want everything to be super crazy and scary. Yeah. Uh, and you'll have to deal with that, I guess. But uh, it'll be fun. It's yeah. Gonna be really fun. Re- regardless of the fact, everyone needs to understand that you know what what the game changes, what's happening. It's not to to smite anybody. You know what I mean? No, that, we want to open up new avenues, it, exactly. avenues for creativity. We want to make sure that all of these existing characters who we love are equipped to handle the cr- new craziness coming in in season two. Exactly. Because I know a lot about what's happening in season two, and you guys don't know a lot yet. Yeah, and we're all we're all gonna get there. I mean, we're all gonna get our hands up. We're gonna be, you know, everyone that that's gonna pick it up. Everyone's gonna be the quote unquote beta testers of their own character at that point, you know, For sure, what, yeah. what, you know, and that's how it's always been. So that's why, you know, any new changes that come by, it's basically our personal little sandbox. We can just do yeah. whatever the heck we want and we'll see what works because you know? we want it to be fun. First, <laughs> we're going to make missteps along the way. We're going to put yeah, something in yeah. here or there. That's a little too good. You guys are going to let us know. We're going to, we're going to tweak it for you because we're doing monthly updates. We're here for you. Uh, we're not going to be overzealous and change the entire game every month. Um, yeah. Or anything, I know I've seen a lot of fears about that. Uh, it's gonna be great. So you know, that it all comes down to the popular phrase that we do in our uh, in our channel. And Keats, you're gonna have to join in on this one, man. What's the you, phrase? You point you point your finger to your monitor. It says, "Please relax." Oh, I tell people to relax all the time. <laughs> Actually, I've been telling people to buy a bottle to put their Jago tears in. Oh, I and then I'm insisting <laughs> that they, I'm insisting they drink those tears when they get bodied by Jago in season two, which oh, they will because Jago is ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's it's I mean, yeah, it's going to be a whole different ball game. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be awesome, you know, and I can't wait. I mean, I hate waiting. Everyone hates waiting. Things I know, just I know. Want, come out like this. I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, it's submissions. You got to have a nice lead because you got to get through submission for these consoles. Um, yeah, yeah. So. You know, it's like you, you kind of need a month lead time, right? Mm-hmm. We submitted 
for the release of of this pre-release thing that has TJ Combo and the the rebalance stuff. Um, I think we're either doing it at the beginning of this week or we did it at the end of last week. I'm not sure. Uh, but you need a, basically a month lead time. Um, mm-hmm. So every time we're every time we're finishing, uh, theoretically finishing a new character, that should be about a month right before you get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully we'll have more information around then, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I can already tell a lot of people on chat are feeling a heck of a lot better with whatever character they play, or just the game in general. So that that's that's awesome, man. That that's what everybody wants. You know, it's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited to see some play. Like I'm I'm hoping that you guys run some tournaments. Uh, oh, like yeah. a bunch of tournaments the first week oh, yeah. that it's out. So I want to see the gameplay evolve in your hands like day to day. Uh, and then I can't wait to see the first big season two tournament once uh, season two's actually started and TJ and Maya are out. Oh, yeah. uh, Maya's, yeah. Maya's a nut. You guys aren't ready. We, we do tournaments. We're, we're starting to do tournaments every week. So when season two you know comes out, it's going to be something just brand spanking new every time. So yeah. that, that's what There's we do. There's some other stuff here. coming in season two too that – we can't talk about yet that is super exciting not character related stuff but there's okay. some super exciting stuff happening okay. uh you know there's a lot of really passionate people at iron galaxy who are working on some really incredible stuff and uh we're we're all going to be singing their praises soon for sure yeah man it's going to be one heck of a party on that day that comes out everybody's just going to be going crazy i cannot wait to man yeah i'm super stoked keats thank you so much for chilling with us tonight man it's sure, been man. it's been an awesome experience awesome awesome indeed it's been a lot of fun man. i feel like we could do this again but in private just talk and talk about <laughs> you know what i, I mean? can go on forever about stuff i'm passionate about so let's you know uh. we should man you know like maybe one of these days if you just feel like chatting it up you can hit me up you know it's it's yeah if i you know i'll, I'll see what kind of time i have um yeah, yeah, yeah. but if i'm feeling like coming on again uh, maybe we can do that and i will uh, see if what I can do since you know we've already showed the changes and stuff about maybe doing some streams at Iron Galaxy over the next couple weeks uh, we can't take a lot of time out of the schedule or anything because we're it's really tight Yeah. Uh, but you know maybe we can get on stream for a half hour here an hour there and just play some matches for you guys so you can make fun of how bad we are <laughs> and see some of the changes in action and all oh, that stuff. Oh yeah, you know th- that um, that just wanted I wanted to ask you uh, one thing. You mentioned that. Have you ever thought of? Uh, or I'm sure you guys have thought about this before, but like bringing up like players to try, you know, uh, do some matches for uh, in season two before it uh, released, or like for any changes like that. Or it's it's possible. We do have some local players who are who are decent. Um, we got Dizzy and Drums and cool. Masiaga and nice. uh, uh, even Squall. He got good too. <laughs> Shouting you out, Squall. Uh, It'd be great I was to see. Beating him man. super free at Evo, and then <laughs> he came to one of our focus tests, and it was keeping up, and I was impressed. He put in some work. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I, I think it would be awesome to see like these, you know, high-level players transition to season two and see what they can do, you know, as well to kind of kind of give people another, you know, better understanding of you know what what can what can happen, you know. Yeah, we had a lot of these guys in for our focus tests, uh, mm-hmm. and. Huge thanks to them for keeping quiet about what they saw um, and played. But uh, they got to see some of these moves before they had like finished effects or animations and stuff too. Yeah. So it was, they had to use their imagination a little bit. Uh, the first version of Orchid Grenade was actually using the Counter Breaker Explosion as a placeholder. Mm. And boy, oh boy, was that confusing. Oh, man. Yeah, that's hard to imagine. <laughs> so I'm like, just imagine that this will look cool eventually. Yeah, yeah, eventually. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right, Keats. Well, man, I'm going to let you get back to uh, whatever you had planned tonight. Thank you so much for Going to sleep because I'm old. Going to sleep because you spent an hour and 30 minutes with us, with us oh, crazies. Oh, I'm so old. <laughs> um, awesome stuff, guys. Um, thank you for asking questions. I mean, he, he answered basically, you know, the, the most interesting ones. Um, awesome stuff, man. I think you covered yeah. everything. Hit me up with the short questions on Twitter. But if you have longer-winded things to say, stop writing books on my Twitter. Just stop it. There you Just go, write guys. a post. Write a post on the forum. Link me the post in one tweet. See, that's the smart stuff. That's go. how you do it. There you go. So. And I'm putting up my camera and I'm saying relax. Yes. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> relax. All right, Keats. Thank you so much, man. We will talk to you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Always a pleasure. We'll talk to you real soon, dude. Sounds good. Take it easy. Have a good night. Stay frosty, everyone. Woo! Wow, that was one hell of a podcast, wasn't it, guys? 
All right, type in one if you're satisfied with, with the amount of knowledge that Keats laid out on the table for you guys. Type in two if you plan to, you know, send Keats a message on Twitter asking an extra thing on the side that wasn't covered on uh, tonight's podcast. Go right on ahead, guys. It's been one... That was really awesome. I really enjoyed that podcast from beginning to end. It was really... It was a lot of fun. And again, for anybody that missed out on anything, I'll be posting it on YouTube so you guys can get your... You know your your readers digest readers digest your your learners uh, your hearing digest there you go your hearing diet your bleh. anywho uh but uh yeah man i think i think everyone uh you know that's what a lot of people wanted to hear and again if there's something that threw you off send them a message okay it's not the end of the world these guys will you know they will hear everything that you have to say and they will give you you know feedback as well okay guys so don't think something's gonna go unanswered you know just uh and also just to remind you um you know if you have something really long to say you know post the link on twitter so that way they can see it okay guys (sighs) that was a good podcast that was pretty good that was a lot of fun